Welcome to part four of Growing Citrus in a Northern Climate, my geothermal experiment. Today I'm going to talk to you about my heating system, specifically the geothermal air system. The idea came from a YouTube video and the basic premise is the person in the video claimed that the soil temperature at eight feet is constantly in the 50s and if you bury a four inch sealed plastic pipe you can draw heat from the soil via conduction. Now the air can be pumped into the greenhouse thus reducing the cost of supplemental heating. It sounded great but I decided to do a little bit of research to see uh, if, if it was true. Now there are a number of different factors that can affect soil temperature. One is how much sunlight hits the soil, how much moisture through rainfall you get, also the season of the year the soil type, the air temperature, and finally the cover uh, on the ground in terms of plants. Now, in order for you to get down to more constant temperatures, you really need to be between 30 and 50 feet down. So eight feet's not gonna give you um, constant soil temperature. And when we get down that low, it's called the mean soil temperature. Now, um, as you go deeper into the earth's crust and even into the mantle, you will get more heat, but obviously we're not going that deep. Now this is a um, chart, and I got this from a website that claimed to have gotten it from Virginia Tech, but when I went to the Virginia Tech website looking for this, I wasn't able to find it. But this is a map showing mean temperatures in the United States, and where there's a circle, that's the station where they actually collected the observations. Now Michigan falls in this range. Now I'm right about in this area, so I'm between a mean soil temperature of 47 degrees and 52 degrees where this line goes uh, through uh, northern Ohio and northern Indiana. So we can expect a mean soil temperature in our area between 47 and 52 degrees. Now as I mentioned before, that can change depending on the time of the year. Now this is a chart that shows the mean soil temperature right here in the middle. This is showing going below the mean soil temperature and this side is going above the mean soil temperature. And what they have here is a wet soil, which what I have is a wet sandy soil because once you get down to eight feet, you hit uh, water. And then you have an average soil and a dry soil. And what I did is I drew a line from eight feet to where these lines would intersect and then you go up and you can find out how much your soil temperature can vary. And the idea here is that eight feet, it can vary minus 11 and plus 10 beyond the mean. Now, I chose the 47 degrees as our mean. That's the lowest temperature because anything higher than that is good. And so that tells me that we can get between 36 and 57 degrees Fahrenheit based on uh, that mean soil temperature that I talked about before. So that shows a little bit of variation even though we're at eight feet. Now this is another chart that's showing seasonal changes of soil temperatures. These are the soil temperatures here on the y-axis. And then on the, um, going across the top, we have the months of the year. And at the bottom, we have the number of days in the year. Now you'll notice that these x equals signs here, this shows um, the temperatures measured at two feet, five feet, and 12 feet. Now you'll notice that at two feet, the soil temperatures really fluctuate quite a bit. They go really high during the summer and they go down low as we get into the cold months. But when you get into the 12 feet, you'll notice that this curve does not deviate that much. This is more of a, a, a small fluctuation. So for instance, we start out here around 64 degrees and then when we get down into April, we uh, drop down into the 50s and then when we get all the way to uh, October we're back over the 60 to about 63 or 64. So even though there is variation at 12 feet there's not as much variation and so that that's a good thing. Now the soil's ability to transfer heat from through the soil itself and obviously going into our pipes is also dependent upon the textural class of the soil. For instance, you'll see sand does not move uh, much heat, and this is measured in British thermal units per foot per hour Fahrenheit, and uh, sand is 0.44 uh, 
whereas a saturated sand is 1.44. So that means um, that, and first of all, we need to talk about what is a British thermal unit. And I have it down here. A British thermal unit is the amount of heat that you need to raise one pound of water up one degree Fahrenheit. So it's, it's a measurement of, of heat. And when you go to buy a, a heater, a garage heater, space heater, or whatever, at the hardware store, you'll see it's you know, 2,000 BTUs or 150,000 BTUs. That's how we know what that thing can do. So if I understand this chart correctly, in one hour, in a saturated sand, you can get 144 BTUs of heat can be transferred through 100 feet of soil. And basically the way I figured that out is I just multiplied this by 100 because we're getting BTUs per foot and that's during an hour. Not a whole lot, but I mean, if you have a lot of pipe and you're moving air quickly, you can uh, transfer heat more quickly. Now this is my greenhouse and this greenhouse is 16 feet long, 12 feet wide, and a little over 11 feet to the top here, but for the purpose of calculations, I calculated it as being 12 feet. So, now one of the things in the, the video, the speaker talked about, how do you determine how much pipe you have to put into the ground? And although he didn't tell me where he came up with this formula, he basically said if your pipe is buried below your greenhouse, in other words, you put it in before you constructed the greenhouse, you divide the area of the greenhouse by 10. If your uh, greenhouse has its pipe outside, you divide by 7. Now, <clears throat> what I did is I found this really nice website. It's uh, www.littlegreenhouse.com and it's an area calculator, an easy way to calculate the area because otherwise I would have to calculate the area of the square part of the greenhouse or the rectangular part and then this three-dimensional triangle. Instead, they just tell you put the length of your greenhouse in, the width of your greenhouse, the height of your greenhouse, and the height of the sidewalls. And I put that in at 16, 12, 12, 7.5, push the calculate button, and then it tells me that I have 773 square feet of house. Now you might ask, well, what good does that do? Well, you divide this by seven, and that tells me how much uh, pipe I'm going to need. And based on that, I had a little over 100 feet of pipe. Now, I decided to really overdo it. I increased this by a factor of four. So I buried 400 feet of pipe. It, it didn't cost me a whole lot of money, but um, money wasn't the reason for this experiment. It was just to try it out. So you might want to ask, well, what is this geothermal project costing me so far? Well, I paid about $260 for the 400 feet of the uh, pipe, this plastic pipe. And it's not the kind that they use for drainage. It's sealed. And um, when I put the sections together, I sealed those also with a whole bunch of um, duct tape. Another thing you can use duct tape for. But anyway, um, then I bought some plastic fence. And the plastic fence I laid out on the ground. And I put the, the uh, tape on that, or the pipe on that. And then I zip tied it to the pipe. And I'll show you that in some of the video a little bit later. And the zip ties cost me about 60 bucks. And then I paid about $400 for the excavation. Uh, it was $60 an hour. And um, it took six hours to do it, so they, I just gave them a little extra. And so that brings me up to $800 thus far in this project. Now, if I have this greenhouse at least 10 years, that's basically $80 a year that's costing me. Now, I, I also have to buy a blower or some kind of fan to pull the air out of the ground and go into the greenhouse. I'm estimating that's going to be about $150, maybe a little bit less, depending on what I get. And that comes up to $950 total for this part of the project. Uh, might seem a little steep for some people, but hey, I'm retired, I'm trying some new things, um, and it's fun. I mean, some people have cars as a hobby, and that's certainly much more expensive. So then the other thing I wanted to do is estimate the heating requirements for the greenhouse. And again, this... Um, site has a way to do that and what you do is you put in the area of your structure which was 773 square feet or excuse me not square feet but cubic feet 
and then I put on the minimal outside temperature that we're going to expect. And so uh, at, in December, when the temperatures are dropping down to maybe 10 degrees or so, it's going to be less heating needed than if we have minus 15. But I put it at, the, at the, about the maximum I can expect, that's minus 15. And then the inside temperature, the temperature I want to maintain it at is about 50 degrees. And I could go a little lower, but I want to keep it about 50. And then the heat loss value is based on what kind of covering you have on your house. And they give you a number of different coverings. And I'm using uh, polycarbonate. And they base this on, um, uh, this one is twin wall. And then they give you a factor. I use single wall, but I'm going to have double wall. So again, I'm being on the conservative side and it's only gonna benefit me. So I put this heat loss factor in there, which is 0 0.90, hit the calculate button, and then it will tell you what you need. And what I need is 45,221 BTUs needed to heat that greenhouse. And so right now I have a kerosene heater in the greenhouse that is rated at 135 BTUs. I mean 135,000 BTUs and so I easily can heat that greenhouse now the cost is quite a lot but uh, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be putting in some other systems I also calculated what would the BTUs be if I'm uh, doing something a little different like using twin walls and also keeping the temperature to a certain temperature and the BTUs drop to almost one half some of the things that I do to save energy so that's one way to save money too so <clears throat> these are just giving you some quick ideas of how I'm working on things I, I don't have my wood stove installed yet I still have to in invest some more money in that and then I have some additional ideas like some solar uh, heating systems which I also saw some ideas on YouTube but that would only help me in the spring and the fall when we have more sunlight at the present time we don't have enough sunlight for solar uh, air to heat up very much and so I'm not using it. So right now I want you to get a look at uh, some of the processes that have been going on in installing this uh, geothermal air system. Well, we're almost done getting this hole buried. Of course, the guy on the back hole was doing a lot more than I was doing. But I thought I would, you know, help out a little bit. And uh, winter has fully hit here. We're expecting up to 10 inches of snow today. And uh, we really needed to get this pipe buried. So we're racing the weather because the heavy snow is going to come in around 3 o'clock. Inside the greenhouse, things are doing just fine. So we'll take a look at that after we conclude the uh, digging out here, or I should say filling in the hole. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.